Well, Wolf, we have now learned that the national security team was able to see some real-time video of this assault taking place from the White House Situation Room. The assault involved four choppers, about two dozen commandos, and they were in and out within 40 minutes. But that's because this special ops team practiced assaulting a mock compound several times, and they were told going in, don't expect these people to surrender. They will fight you hard. And true to that, Osama bin Laden died with a gun in his hand. For years, everyone assumed Osama bin Laden would live out his days or die in the rugged mountains along the Afghan border. For all intents and purposes, he was killed in the suburbs, less than 40 miles from where the president of Pakistan lives. There are no rocky caves near bin Laden's compound in Aptabad, but there are golf courses in the Pakistan Military Academy. And his house was eight times bigger than any home in the neighborhood. Speaking about that from a visual perspective, here is bin Laden, who has been calling for these attacks, living in this million-dollar-plus compound, living uh, in, in an area that is far removed from the front. The three-story building was built about six years ago. A courier and his brother lived on the first floor of another building. Bin Laden's family occupied the top two floors of the main building. Unlike other neighbors who took their trash out, these people burned theirs inside the compound. And if two main gates weren't enough to discourage visitors, opaque windows shielded the inside. And there was an 18-foot wall surrounding the outer part of the compound. It stood out. And a U.S. intelligence official says, given how bad al-Qaeda's finances are, they would only spend this kind of money for one of their top two commanders. So in effect, bin Laden was the engineer of his own destruction. That end began with U.S. military helicopters swooping in, an assault team entering from multiple locations. A team of Navy SEALs fast roped down to the ground, searching for Geronimo, their code name for bin Laden. And they're going room to, th room, to room, very methodical, uh, you know, engaging targets and, you know, completing the mission. But it's a, it's a really um, intense... Uh, personal, you know, up close and personal type of operation. High above, multiple American planes and unmanned drones were flying just outside Pakistani airspace, ready to fire if the team needed help. CIA Director Leon Panetta was quarterbacking the mission in constant secure radio contact with the assault team. And back at the White House, the president was anxiously monitoring events. Few officials even said a word. The minutes passed like days, and uh, the president uh, was very concerned about the security of our personnel. Back on the ground, the assault team was fighting its way through the main building. Two women were wounded in the firefight, and there were children inside. At one point, one of the residents grabbed Osama bin Laden's wife against her will. She fought back when there was a, uh, the opportunity to get to bin Laden. Uh, she was uh, positioned in a way that uh, indicated that she was being used as a shield. She was shot and died. The SEALs killed the two men defending bin Laden and his son. Even bin Laden himself shot back. But with a shot to the head, the SEALs took him out. While all this was going on, one of the U.S. helicopters had trouble. The team made the call to destroy it there on the ground and hustled the women and children out before detonating the aircraft. And we're told there was an audible sigh in the Situation Room by the National Security Team when that team did make it out safely with bin Laden's body. And there was also sheer awe at what they had just been able to accomplish. Now, they didn't spend that entire 40 minutes fighting. Some of that time was spent collecting papers and material what one intelligence official calls a robust amount of information and intelligence that they now hope to exploit to go after other members of al-Qaeda.